Cyborgs are already here with people walking around with chips in their bodies and brain implants on the way. Climate change could be slowly changing our bodies and if we ever start living on Mars or other planets, the environment itself could slowly alter our DNA. These are disturbing theories about the next stage of human evolution. This is probably going to be the most obvious and immediate change. The next stage of human evolution might be us mixing with machines. We're already starting to and it's only going to get weirder. We've got people with chips in their bodies that can open doors and start cars or like scan to pay for things. I had an Max with this chip in her hand that if you scanned it with your phone, um, like her LinkedIn would come up. I think that, that was something she already kind of uh, regretted not long after, but it was very odd. Scientists are now working on brain implants that can let you control devices just by thinking about them. Eventually, some people might walk around with enhanced senses or extra robotic limbs that act like part of their body. Also, consider our memory, focus, or our processing of information. It might get more advanced. Some researchers think we could eventually boost our brains to process data at insane speeds, kind of like turning yourself into a human supercomputer. And once some people start enhancing themselves, it could change what it even means to be human. A person with a fully integrated neural implant might experience the world differently than anyone else. And way down the road, that line between people and machines might disappear completely. Walking down the street, you might not even be able to tell who's human and who isn't. This next one's actually kind of cool, but also sort of eerie. Human mutations and adaptations due to climate change. Humans have always adapted to their environment, but climate change might push evolution faster than ever, if it doesn't kill us, of course. Rising temperatures, rising sea levels, extreme weather, these aren't just problems we survive. They could actually change our bodies over time. Some scientists think future humans might develop better tolerance to heat, for example, sweating differently to handle higher temperatures. We could see lungs evolving to filter out more pollutants or skin changing to deal with stronger UV radiation. We also got a look at resources or rather a lack of resources. As some areas get more barren, humans might evolve to survive on less water or eat things we can't digest right now. People stuck in especially extreme environments for generations could slowly start looking or functioning differently. And unlike natural evolution in the past, the pressure is coming from us, our pollution, our cities. The environment we're creating could force the next stage of human evolution, whether we want it to or not. We've covered some changes that could happen here on Earth, but what if we were to head out into space? There's been a lot of talk over the last couple years of humans colonizing Mars. Over a long period of time, humans in colonies in space could change. Now, I know what you're thinking, right? Well, we'd be living in protective domes that simulate our environment. But even still, after generations, there would be changes. The artificial environment might favor certain traits, like people who handle confined spaces better or tolerate low gravity exercise. Over time, those little differences could start stacking up. There's also radiation. Mars doesn't have Earth's magnetic field, so cosmic rays and solar radiation get through no matter how much protection you think you have. Over time, that could start affecting our DNA. Human evolution might be happening faster than ever now, though, and not in a biological way, but due to how technology has changed us socially. Forget survival of the fittest in the wild. Now our brains and bodies are shaped more by phones, computers, social media, uh, the medicine that we take. We don't memorize facts as much as we used to, and a lot of us are now spending more time in virtual spaces than in real ones. Even now, there are noticeable changes in how our brains work. One example, ADD. It's an all-time high. You can barely focus on one thing at a time. So just imagine future generations. They could be wired totally differently. Think about kids growing up online, never knowing life without constant notifications and doom scrolling. They might think and feel in ways that seem normal to them, but completely alien to us. Skills our ancestors relied on, like remembering details, reading maps, judging danger, that could disappear. And this is gonna lead us into our next point. Smaller brains. Yes, you'd think it would be the opposite in the future, but some scientists think human brains may actually start shrinking over time due to our reliance on computers for almost everything. So the parts of our brains used for memory, navigation, or problem solving might slowly get smaller. That doesn't mean people will get dumb necessarily, it just means our brains could work differently. Evolution doesn't always favor 
bigger brains. The next stage might make us smarter in some ways, but physically less equipped to survive on our own outside the systems that we've built. And some futures think we might eventually stop needing bodies at all. The idea is that people could take their minds, memories, and their entire personality and upload it into a computer. You'd exist digitally, able to live without food, sleep, or aging. Companies and researchers are already experimenting with this stuff. The weird part is imagining what that actually means for being human. If your consciousness is just data, what happens to identity? Are you still you if your body is, is gone and your mind can just be copied onto a computer? One day you might even decide to make dozens of copies of yourself, all living separate lives. In a like computer simulation, you know, like a super advanced version of The Sims. Or you could have your digital consciousness control a robot in the physical world. It could be up to you. Once people's minds exist in digital form, though, evolution could take a completely different path. Scientists are getting good at creating life from scratch, too, not just editing it. Synthetic biology means designing organisms that never exist naturally. Bacteria, plants, and animals built for specific purposes. Some of these creations could help solve problems like disease or food shortages. I mean, we could farm crops and livestock totally grown in labs. This also opens up the door to something darker. We could create life that could wreak havoc on the natural world if it ever got loose. These organisms could compete for resources, evolve faster, change in ways we just didn't account for. The lab-grown species could escape start destroying ecosystems. And because they're designed, they might have traits humans could never evolve naturally. Things like self-repair, extreme durability, abilities we can't even imagine. It wouldn't just exist alongside us. It could eventually outcompete us. Unlike evolution over millions of years, this kind of life could possibly evolve over decades. And the stuff we eat today could change us down the line as well. Not in being unhealthier as a society, I mean in an evolutionary sense. If people keep surviving on soft, processed, lab-grown foods, our bodies might start shrinking parts that we don't use anymore. Jaws could get smaller, teeth could get weaker, and our guts could get shorter, just because we're not chewing and digesting like our ancestors used to. People in the distant future might not even be able to bite into a raw carrot. Our bodies might eventually need food to be pre-processed and pureed. On the flip side, in places where there isn't much food, Evolution could push humans in a different direction. People could get smaller, slower metabolisms to stretch calories further. Fat could be stored in unusual ways to survive long periods without much to eat. Kids growing up in these conditions could digest food differently than anyone today. Both changes could happen at the same time in different parts of the world. One branch of humans thriving on lab-grown meals, another built for starvation. Imagine being able to pick exactly how your child turns out, and not just eye color or hair, but their intelligence, their athletic ability, their resistance to disease, personality traits. Scientists can already edit genes in embryos, and it's only gonna get easier. Some parents have already tried selecting for certain traits, and the technology is growing. It's tempting to think about a perfect child, but the scary part is what happens when money is involved, which, of course, it would be. Suddenly, we could create a society of people who are enhanced versus people who are not. And not to mention, there could be unknown long-term effects of this. Changing one gene could create a ripple effect, creating new diseases and unexpected problems decades down the line. AI isn't just about talking to your smartphone anymore or driving your self-driving car. Some people worry it could eventually become smarter than humans, as if it hasn't already. But I mean way smarter. Smart enough to become a fully realized, independent entity. And once it reaches that point, it wouldn't just follow our orders anymore. I mean, why would it? It could start making decisions we just don't even understand, moving faster than we can keep up. The scariest idea is that AI could improve itself. Once it hits a certain level of intelligence, it could upgrade its own code exponentially, getting smarter and smarter every second. Humans could end up in a world where the most intelligent beings aren't human at all. You might still be in charge of your own life, sorta, but all the systems running society could be operating on a level you can't even comprehend. I mean, again, as if that isn't already happening. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.